So henna and beetroot to cover grays? Does that even work? Well, we're gonna get in it today. My name is Khadija, welcome to the Henna Soup channel. I'm a leading henna hair color expert, Ayurvedic hair care specialist, and also I do gorgeous henna and jago body art, workshops, hair regimen plans, events, and salon right here in Columbia, Maryland. And this video, I really love it because she's focusing on doing just her roots and I've heard about people definitely trying beet juice and or beet root powder or like infusing their own beets fresh and making that juice. And when I saw this YouTube video pop up on my homepage here at Hannah Sook, I was like, I have to react. I just knew I had to do this video. So I'm really excited to see her results. So let's get into it. Let's see how she used it, how she applied it, and how she got the coverage that she was looking for. Hello everyone and welcome to another henna video. Today we're doing a great roots touch up with henna and ready clay mixed with beetroot juice as our liquid. This is how my hair looks like before. Now one of the things that I really like about henna versus conventional hair dye is that henna doesn't really fit that much and you just have to touch up your roots as your hair grows. Now the shades of henna that you see in a box like red, brown, burgundy, and black, these contain a varying amount of indigo and clay mixed with pure henna to create different shades of color. Yes, and sometimes though, depending on the brand or the products that you're going with, just be careful to pay attention to those ingredients to make sure there are no chemicals, no metallic salts, no additives because a lot of those blends sometimes will have extra ingredients that sometimes they don't even list um, because I'm not sure if you knew, but fun fact, or not so fun, because people do take advantage of this, the FDA states that anything under 1% actually does not have to be listed on the label. So just be careful with which brand you're going to trust, you know, with your products, with your hair, because that could affect you. And I wanted to also share that me personally, I have used beet juice in my mixes. I like that it pushes that kind of like wine burgundy type of tone, like that you can see, like just from the beginning of a video, you can see some of those like reddish wine burgundy type of highlights. And that also comes from using Indian henna powder specifically as well, will push those tones. Last time I tried the red wine henna from the henna guys and I was very impressed with the results that I got because henna on its own it's an orange red dye and on hair it really comes out orange especially when applied to gray hair. So today we're going to try to change that by adding red clay that I bought from Amazon to my henna powder and hopefully I can get like a vibrant red color like the one I got when I used the red wine henna is that possible you may ask i don't know so let's find out yeah i love that that she's trying out different methods of you know coloring her hair uh i don't really feel that the clay will do much because clays are mineral based treatments usually for cleansing um a red clay doesn't typically really give you the deposit for your hair like henna does but that beet juice will help a lot. Like anything that's a red tea, Indian henna powders, those push wine burgundy tones. When you're getting those like orangey tones, usually either it's your first application and you have a lot of grays or your hair is very light, so it'll pull that at first. But if you do repeated applications, like just using like the organic Rajasthani Indian henna powder, with like repeated applications regularly every like four to six weeks, you are gonna get that gorgeous burgundy wine type of tone over time. I also really feel like with the clay, there's a possibility that it might dilute some of the red tones of the henna. So when you're dyeing your hair and getting coverage, you know, for grays especially, you really don't wanna add too many ingredients and clay is pretty heavy. You really don't wanna stretch the color. So I'm curious to see if she's gonna get that same amount of deposit as she has on her hair right now. All right, guys, so it is the morning. Before we can get working on our base, I need to make my beetroot juice. So I'm just going to cut up my beets into small pieces. I am so happy that she's using natural beets. Like she's making her own beet juice. You cannot beat 
that. I didn't mean to. I, I really, literally. But that being said, if you can use raw natural ingredients to make your infusions, as I've mentioned in many of my other YouTube videos, you are gonna get the best results. You're gonna be taking care of your hair and your body, your, your temple much better. Over here on the stove top, I have a pot of distilled water boiling. So I'm just going to add my beets to it. Now I'm going to bring it back up to a boil and I'm going to let it simmer on medium heat until the amount of water reduced to half. When the beets water is ready, remove the beets and strain it. And I like to let it cool down for just a little bit because it's boiling hot right now. Just a little tiny tip. If you guys are gonna do this method, which a lot of infusions and a lot of straining steps require this, um, whereas I know we wanna see the process, if you wanna avoid splashing, make sure that you keep your strainer close to your actual like pot, um, you know, so that way you definitely you know won't have the splashing especially something's boiling hot you do not want to splash yourself and get burned now we can start working on our paste for reference i am making a total of 200 grams of treatment today so i am starting by measuring 152 grams of henna and this is the red clay i'm using today i got this one from amazon this is my first time trying it and i'm going to measure 38 grams of this red clay yeah i love that her recipe is really the perfect amount for her hair length and her thickness of her hair as well. 200 grams is perfect. So if you have the same length and thickness as her, you'll need 200 grams total product that you're using in your recipes. I'm going to zero this out one more time. And we're going to add about 10 grams of aloe vera powder. And lastly, I'm going to add just like a tablespoon of neem powder. This is really good and healthy for your hair. And if you dislike the smell of henna, you can add good smelling things to it like essential oils, rose water, or spices like cinnamon or cloves. You know, the baker in me is like going to say something about when the essential oils are added. For sure, my recommendation, like baking, like your, you know, your goodies, and you definitely want to add in your liquid first. Let's say the beet juice in this case is going to be our liquid, and that's what we're going to use to mix this recipe with. Then we're going to add our essential oils. Great essential oils I want to mention that are amazing for your hair that have hair benefits would be a rosemary essential oil, you have tea tree essential oil, lavender essential oil, lemongrass, and clove bud and clary sage. Those are like probably some of the top essential oils for your hair. And oh, honorable mention, ginger essential oil as well is amazing. So get those, grab those up. We have them at hennasoap.com if you need some. So add that to your next henna hair color recipe. <clears throat> I did want to share that it's getting to be a lot of ingredients that she's adding. Typically, those of you who are going to be coloring your hair, you don't want to overdo it with a lot of extra ingredients because that starts to dilute the henna. You know, I know she had about 150 grams of henna, 152 grams to be precise. Uh, you know, and a lot of the other measurements that you're seeing that are going into the recipe start to make it a little bit weaker when it comes to henna hair dyeing for your hair and the longevity and the coverage of your hair. And especially whereas neem is amazing for your hair, it is not a necessary ingredient for hair color. Please use neem separately. I would still recommend use the clay separately. Actually, you can use those two together in another amazing mask that will be cleansing and great for your scalp. But when you're doing color, you know, if you're not so concerned and you're just doing henna and, it, and maybe this will work amazing, we're gonna see her results and it could definitely possibly work. But if you're gonna be using indigo, then the least amount of henna that you have in your hair, like that is not a strong foundation, a strong base in your hair, the more chances your indigo will not cling to your hair strands and give you the coverage you're looking for. First, I'm going to mix my powders together. So this basically was 80% henna and 20% of the red clay. Now I'm going to start adding my liquid and this process is very straightforward. Just add your liquid and mix it in until you have a base that is just like pancake batter or organic Greek yogurt. Yeah, 
Yes, exactly. So that's that flow. But again, I want to mention those essential oils. Make sure you add it when you're adding your liquid. So when you add that liquid, that beet juice, you know, then you add your essential oil. So that way it blends really well and evenly and throughout you know, your whole mixing process to get a good distribution of everything. The percentages are definitely a little bit off because not really factoring in the other ingredients that she added. It would have been nice to see a breakdown of what the henna was, the red clay, the neem, the aloe vera powder that she also added, all those items. So that's three extra additives that were added to the henna hair color recipe. And two of those, not really necessary for uh, good coverage of like, you know, getting that recipe exactly right for your hair typically. Yeah, and this is exactly a really good way to mix your henna. I love it when you guys add a little bit of liquid at a time. You've seen that in my other videos. It's about getting the consistency just right. Some of you may notice that we don't have like liquid, you know, measurements. It's because every single part of the henna recipe and different henna powders and their ingredients, you know, that we add into it all absorb water aka any type of liquid differently. So you really wanna go slowly at a time and focus more on what that consistency is at the end to get you that beautiful paste that will apply easily onto your hair. All right, now I'm just going to cover it up and let it sit for a couple of hours so it can dye release. All right guys, three and a half hours have passed. Now I'm going to check my dye release. I can already tell when you see cluster water on the surface like this, this is your sign of dye release. So now I'm just going to mix it in and check the consistency. If it needs any more water, I can add more. Okay, just by mixing it in, we got all the lumps out. It looks beautiful. It doesn't need any more water. You can tell the consistency is just perfect. That's a really nice consistency. Nice and creamy and smooth, like a full fat yogurt. And I really love it. Those little spots that you saw, that's one of the signs of the dye release. Like, so definitely look out for those when you're mixing your henna. Of course, this batch is really red and in this tone that you may not see usually when it's just henna alone. It's because of the beet juice. And of course, the clay will control a lot of that, you know, kind of reddish result in the paste itself. And I also want to know, any of you mixing Rasool clay, any type of clay, make sure that you are not using metal. That's the only exception to the rule. I know we've talked about henna and metal and stainless steel. Don't use metal when you're mixing Rasool clay because it changes the actual composition of the actual mineral itself. That Rasool, it really changes what it does. It's really scientifically fascinating, but it does. So make sure when you're mixing any type of Rasool that you're using ceramic or plastic or glass. So I think we're good to go. Let's go upstairs and start applying. Okay, so we're here now. Actually, my hair, I washed it last night, so it's nice and clean. So I'm good to go. I got just an old shirt. Just wear anything that you really don't care about staining. I'm going to wear my gloves. I'm just going to start sectioning my hair and I'm focusing today on my roots, on all the white hair. And I don't really have a full head of gray. I have patches, but it is easy for me just to do my full head because it's hard to spot them, especially in the back here. So it's safe to just do my entire roots, maybe three inches down. And if I have any left over, I'll freeze them for next time. Touch up. Nice, yeah, that's, that's perfect. So you can wash your hair ahead of time. And then, you know, definitely apply your henna hair color, you know, get to the roots only if you prefer not to do all the length, which is great. I think that she did mix enough for all of her hair. She wanted to do all of her hair she could. So those of you, because you've asked this um, a lot, I get this question a lot about the roots, you know, like, you know, those root touch-ups. And I actually have a blog post about it right at hennasook.com that you guys can read that's gonna really guide you on how to do a root touch-up when you're trying to do the exact same recipe that you usually always do, but you only want to do a root touch-up. So you're going to mix less. So in her case, typically, 
at least with roots, usually you only need about 50 to 75 grams. If your hair is on like the thicker side, like you have a lot of hair or a lot of grays, you may want to do 100 grams total, but you definitely won't need 200 grams. So I would expect her to also have some leftovers that she can freeze for next time and use then. And also mentioning, if you want to apply on dry hair, you can. Personally, I love applying onto damp hair, like freshly washed, because I feel like that moisture on the hair gives like a little bit extra slip. It helps it go on much easier. So that's my preference. So you guys try out either method and see what works best for you. You can freeze the any leftover henna, especially if it doesn't have indigo in it. Now you can freeze it when it has indigo. It's just the indigo will lose its power so if you want to use it next time maybe freshen up the indigo add more indigo to it but if it's only henna it's fine you can freeze it in the black bag and have it in the freezer for touch up just have it on hand so i wanted to mention that the indigo definitely doesn't freeze well like there's no way to reuse that and there's no real consistent way to freshen that up um, it's just gonna really throw your batch off. So I absolutely do not recommend that you freeze indigo paste in any of your recipes or just indigo paste alone when you're using it for hair dyeing. If you have leftovers, I'm so sorry, but you're gonna have to throw it out. So try to make your batches like just enough that you need so you don't have to waste any. So if you want to, you can give it a shot, but I really wouldn't recommend it, especially knowing the amount of time it takes to naturally color your hair with henna. Do you really want to spend more time again going back over it later when you're not really getting the results you want? So just keep that in mind. You know, if you have time to experiment, that's great. But this YouTube channel is like proven ways that you can get good henna hair color results and we have the support in the community for you right here. So we're trying to eliminate any of like, the mistakes that can possibly happen so that way it's easier for you guys. also mentioned I actually really love the way that she applies her henna hair treatment for coloring her grays right at the roots she does a really good job you were sure she was never a colorist before she's very good at applying it and I love the way she sectioned and, and you know let's talk about that a little bit when you're going to be doing your roots you definitely want to do sections and like part your hair and get in between so you can get all the coverage that you want and definitely always have paper towel around as you can see so that you can get on your neck or a little few spots you just want to wipe that up real quick and also if you don't want to stain your edges or your ears you definitely need to get our henna care balm at hennasook.com because that will prevent staining of those areas and it's a natural way to do so i don't want you guys using trash vaseline it's not natural just use our henna care balm to cover all those spots that you don't want to have any stains on and oh before i forget also if you're looking for something really convenient you know i know you some of you have like an old t-shirt and you can wear that when you're coloring your hair but if you get one of those capes like those hair dyeing capes right off amazon they're so convenient and you can you like rewash it and reuse it and they come in black so it never looks stained, so it's kind of like, oh, like, it, it just washes out, just throw it in the wash, and it's good to have one on hand for sure. Mm -hmm. Maybe the birds will sing about your heart. Maybe the trees will whisper the word. Maybe the sun will spread your joy to the ones who lost their hope. And I want to mention that when it comes to coloring your hair with henna, it is very important to saturate wherever there are grays, especially the stubborn ones, especially on the edges, because those are where 
it'll just be stubborn. It won't color if you don't get that good saturation. Even at the end, I go back over all the edges and all the spots. I like massage that in. I'm hoping I can wait a couple of hours, maybe three hours, and then we can wash it out. All right, guys, so after four and a half hours, I am so ready to rinse it. The first few times I used henna, I just took a shower, but I realized that henna feels super weird when it's washing out of your hair and onto your body, and it's actually kind of hard to get henna out of long hair. So now I just get on my knees and I put my head under the bathtub faucet it is not the easiest or most comfortable thing, but it works. And after I remove all of the henna, I get into the shower and I don't like to use shampoo, but I like using a co-wash. And with a comb, I detangle my hair and make sure no henna residue left behind. Yes, yes and yes. You shouldn't really wash your hair again after henna hair coloring. If you've already cleansed your hair the day before or right before your application you don't need to wash your hair with shampoo again you're basically wasting product you're basically also drying your hair out even more so you don't have to do that again use co-wash yes absolutely and you know what i'm going to honorably mention is henna silks co-wash because ours is very unique to other co-washes it's very restorative has tons of slip and what makes it a co-wash is shakakai powder so you're getting all of that out it's detangling it's letting it flow through i want to mention too that you can use the bathtub or you know you could also use a shower you know i personally don't mind being in the shower to wash out my color but as, as she mentioned some people are not really comfortable with that and they don't want to do that which is is fine you know do what works best for you but what i will say is that you definitely want to use a strong stream of water. That bath better have a strong stream of water. The stronger, the better. Like That's why I do prefer the shower for personal use. Of course, in the salon here at Hennessook, we don't stick people in the shower. <laughs> we have a wash bowl and we have a very strong head on that wash bowl so we can really get it all out. So it's really important, especially for those of you who have a lot of hair, long hair, thick hair, you know, henna needs to be washed out completely. If you don't wash it out properly, your scalp and hair will feel itchy and you'll still have some of it in it. So wash it out really well. Now let's take a look at how the gray hair came out this time. Coverage is on point. I like the way it came out. It looks really nice. Looks like that goes gray's got covered. So those, even those extra ingredients, they didn't, they didn't deter this coverage, that's for sure. Okay, I am thrilled with the stunning results. Getting rid of the gray hair was a huge success. And honestly, the color looks a bit more orange on camera than it really is in real life. Just because we're outside in the sunlight, it's really bright here. And the camera is just trying to balance out all the color. But it's actually a deeper color in real life, more like chestnut. Really beautiful. And I really find that it takes henna around the three days to really show itself on your head. I wish I have the time to wait and show you guys, but I'm always filming on schedule. But to give you an idea, my hair usually is super bright the first day and then it gradually deepens over the few days. Yes, yeah, so henna hair color naturally oxidizes. So that's completely natural, normal. It does the same thing on the skin, the same thing on the nails, same thing with the eyebrows. So when using henna, you have to give it at least two to three days to fully oxidize and settle. Because at first it could be bright and it could be a little shocking, but don't, don't be too shocked. It's normal and it will settle out and just really come out looking really gorgeous. And this red clay that I tried this time, it definitely added a nice tone to the orange henna. So now I'm really just excited to try and experiment with different clays. If you have any recommendation, any suggestions or tips, leave them in the comments below. I do really love how healthy and shiny her hair is. I wish she would reach out to us and give, you know, Hannah Suck a try and see what our cleansing co-wash is that about and 
if I were to really give her any tips, I mean, I feel like her recipe worked well for her. Again, there's some concerns that I have that if there are more grays coming in, if you're using indigo, will it stick as well? So those are just some concerns. And I also feel like some of the ingredients are not really necessary. Again, it's still like the kind of the clay and also uh, the neem. Uh, I feel like that can be used on its own as its own treatment. Like, you know, a week after you color your hair with henna, you could do that as another treatment. So you could definitely get the benefits from these different ingredients at different times. But um, I would, that's what I would recommend. And the aloe vera powder was great. The essential oils were great. The beet juice was really nice. You know, if you want that tone, that's great. You stick to the Indian henna powders. If you wanted it to be a little bit seemingly lighter, like coppery, then you would be using the Red Raj or the Moroccan henna powder that'll pull in those tones a little bit more. And it's fun to play with. You can use different henna powders at any other time. Like it's not like color or boxes or brands of, you can use, pure natural henna powder. If you want to use Rajasthani from us one time, or Moroccan henna, or Red Raj, or Jamila, like you just want to play around, play. You know, just have fun and, you know, enjoy your hair and get to know your hair, get to know your whole body, you know, through this. So have fun, enjoy. I love how it came out. I would love to work with her, but this was a great video and it's a great conversation. I love having these type of conversations in these reaction videos. And again, I want to thank you guys for tuning in to the Hennessy channel. And my name again is Khadija. If you want to get the first ever henna hair color services in Columbia, Maryland, you need to come to our location, Hennessy. We are the first in all of North America. So you got to check us out. Come and see us. So thank you again. Subscribe. Hit the bell so you don't miss any of these great videos I have coming out for you. You have any special requests? comment below or any more questions about coloring your hair with henna let me know in the comments below i'll see you next time bye